Okay, last we're gonna look at concentration and the dilution of the solutions. Now I didn't see too much about dilution uh, in the ATI study manual, so hopefully, you know, it's not gonna get too complicated. So let's look at concentration first. Concentration refers to the amount of solute in a given amount or volume of a solution. I know that's a very long definition, um, but look at this example. If you have a uh, glucose solution and the concentration is 100 milligram per liter, that just means that you have 100 oops, milligram glucose in a one liter solution, right? It tells you how much solute you have in a given volume of a solution. So that's concentration. Dilution, you probably all know this, right? If you add a more solvent, and again, we're talking about water. If you're adding more water to the solution, that's gonna dilute the concentration, right? That's gonna bring the concentration down because you still have the same amount of glucose, but you have a more solvent, right? We're gonna add a one liter of water to one liter of this solution, 100 milligram per liter glucose. And now you have doubled the amount of the solvent, right? Uh, and that's gonna dilute the solution by half, right? So the concentration is gonna change from 100 to 50 milligram per liter, right? Because originally you have one liter and you add another liter of just water. So it, the, the volume increases, the volume doubles, so the concentration is going to be reduced by half. Okay, next, I have a list of common concentration units. Now, this is completely new in T's. So you may see um, a question that uses um, these units. The first one is molarity, and we have talked about molarity in Lesson 21, Describe Chemical Reactions. So hopefully you still remember what uh, one mole is, right, in one mole of any substance, you have about this many particles, right? And don't worry about this number, but when you solve questions on T's, just remember one mole of a substance equals the atomic weight of that substance, and then the, the unit will be gram. So this is how you can convert something very abstract, right? One mole, like this many particles, to something that we can actually measure, right? You can measure something in grams or kilograms, right? So for example, one mole of water would be 18 grams, right? Because a hydrogen um, has an atom atomic mass of one, and then you have two hydrogen, right? So that's two. And oxygen that has uh, atomic weight of 16. So water together has atomic weight of 18. So one mole of water is going to weigh 18 grams. If you can remember that, then you'll be okay. Now, when we talk about solutions, right, we could use something um, that involves the, the actual weight unit, like a gram per liter, right, or a milligram per liter. But a lot of times in chemistry and biology for more advanced experiments, people actually use a mole per liter. So that's molarity. So that's the unit that's commonly used in research. And all these units are pretty common in um, not just biology, chemistry, but also in, medical, in the medical field. So I think that's why ATI is adding all these units to T's so that you are familiar with them. Now for molarity, um, you don't have to write out mole per liter. You can just use the capital M or use millimolar. So millimole is going to be one thousandth of mole, one mole. So that's the relationship. It's the same thing if you were talking about gram and milligram, right? Milligram is one thousandth of a gram. So one gram is a thousandth milligram. And same thing here, one mole is a thousand millimole. All right, now second one is mole fraction. That's moles of the solute divided by the total moles present. So that includes both 
um, the solute and solvent plus solvent. There you go. So that's mole fraction. That should be pretty easy to calculate, right? You get the number for moles of the solute. You get the number for moles of the solvent, right? And then you're going to use these two numbers to calculate the total. And then just divide moles of the solute by the total moles. And that's it. Next one is mass percentage. So it's usually uh, denoted as percentage W slash W, right? Weight by weight. Um, that's very straightforward. Mass of the solute divided by mass of the solution. And because it's a percentage, so you just multiply by 100. Uh, the last three are very common concentration units. Parts per thousand, so that's usually the solute, the weight of the solute in gram divided by the weight of the solution in kilogram. And because one gram is one thousandth of a kilogram, right? So that's parts per thousand. Parts per million, similarly, right? But now you are going to use an even smaller weight unit, right? So now you have a milligram. Milligram to kilogram, that's a million, that's one millionth, right? So that's why it's parts per million, ppm. And the last one, that's the smallest one, parts per billion. So MC is a micro. Sometimes you will see this letter for a micro. And that is one billionth of a kilogram. And hence, parts per billion. I don't see, I don't think you will see parts per billion just because the numbers are a little bit extreme. So if you can get familiar with parts per thousand and parts per million, that will be great. Just get really, really good at the conversion. Often, PPT, PPM, and PPB are um, based on solvent volume instead of a weight. I know ATI is giving you all these, all the weight, right? But a lot of times it's really just like this one gram per liter, one milligram per liter, um, as opposed to one gram per kilogram, one milligram per kilogram. So a lot of times you will see that the it's really based on the solvent volume. Okay, practice question. Since it involves calculations, so I'll give you a little bit more time. Um, so you had 60 seconds to answer these two questions. The molecular weight of glucose is 180 grams per mole. What is the molarity of 45 grams per liter glucose solution? In this case, you just need to divide the concentration, right, which is a 45 gram per liter, by 180 grams per mole, right? Because you have 45 grams of glucose and one mole of glucose is 180 grams. So uh, 45 divided by 180, that's 0.25. And then gram, gram cancel out. So that's going to be 0.5 mole per liter, right? And then this can be abbreviated to the big letter M. So the answer is 0.25. Now convert your answer for question one to millimole. Now one mole is 
a thousand millimole, right? So when you convert to mole to millimole, just remember multiply by the conversion factor, which is a thousand. So 0 .5, 0 0.25 multiplied by a thousand, that's 250 millimole. Now, if you think this is a little bit hard to understand, how about you use dollar and the cent? So mole is a big unit, right? So it's like a dollar. And the millimole is a smaller unit. It's kind of like a cent, right? Cent is much, cent is much smaller than dollar. Now, if you have one dollar and I ask you that, and I ask you to convert one dollar to cent, you would multiply by the conversion factor, which is a hundred, right? Because one dollar equals a hundred cents. So you multiply a hundred. So that's going to be a hundred cents. Okay. Now, what if I give you half a dollar, 0.5? How many cents would that be? Again, you multiply by 100, and that's going to be 50 cents. Okay. The same thing for mole, millimole. Right? When you convert from the large unit to the smaller unit, you multiply a thousand, you multiply the conversion factor. When you do the opposite, when you convert millimole to mole from small to large, you divide that conversion factor, which is a thousand. So let me write it out from large to small, multiply. And in this case, it's a thousand, right? And when you do the opposite, from small to large, you divide by a thousand, right? If you forget, just think of dollar and cent, how you will convert those two units.